Today, the SP500 hit a new all-time high. This is because banks reported better than expected earnings, especially when it came to what they said about customers. This makes investors a little more optimistic about the state of the economy. But we also got depressing information from the University of Michigan about how consumers felt about the way things were right now and how they thought things would be in the next 12 months. Things did get worse. Notably, this pushed 10-year bond yields down, which is one reason why the market is rising today. Today, 10-year Treasury yields are going down by about 1.5 basis points to 4.08%. This is the first time in what seems like a long time that yields on 10-year Treasuries are actually going down. Because of this, the Russell 2000 is the best-performing big index. As of today, the Russell 2000 is up 1.8%, the Dow is up 0.85%, the SP500 is up 0.57%, and the NASDAQ is 0.7% behind. The VIX, on the other hand, is still pretty high at 20.30 and is only down about 3% today, as you can see. The last time this happened, the SPX was at 3,700, which is the same price as it was in 2022. Goldman Sachs says that the SPX hit a new all-time high of 5,792, while the VIX spot got as low as 21. This doesn't happen very often. EP estimates for 2024 are still going down. At the end of the year, they are at $239.99 per share, which is the lowest level we have seen since the beginning of 2024 and the lowest level we have seen in a few years. Also, predictions for 2025 have begun to fall. At the same time, the markets keep going up to all-time highs. Values don't seem to be important anymore. Tell me what you think. Go down tell us in the comments below if valuations are still important to buyers or if they aren't as important as they used to be. Now on the economic front, we did get PI month over month, which came in at 0% when the consensus was 0.1%. This is also helping to boost markets a bit. Core PPI for the past month was 0.2%, which was the same as what was expected for the past year. The PPI number was a bit higher than expected, at 2.8% instead of 2.7%, which is a bit depressing. However, there were some changes from last month that made the numbers higher. It was revised up to 2.6% from 2.4% for core year-over-year -year last month, so even with those changes, it was still better than predicted. The way people feel in Michigan right now is very strange. They said the big number for today was 68.9, but the guess was 70.8, so we missed it. Your reading of 3% inflation over the next five years was the only good thing about this report. The assumption was 3.1% inflation. Now consumer expectations were expected at 75, we came in at 72.9 last month, we were at 74.4, so consumer expectations for the economy over the next 12 months got worse, people got more pessimistic and, and less optimistic about how the economy is going to be, uh, you know, 1 to 12 months out current. Conditions came in lower than expected as well, we were expecting 64.3 last month was 63.3, so we were expecting people to get a little bit more confident about current conditions, but that actually fell to 62.7 so you came in lower than last month and well lower than the estimate some of the weird. Part as well is your one-year inflation expectation we were expecting 2.6%, and that actually came in at 2.9%, which is another head-scratcher. So I really think some of this worse-than-expected economic data from the University of Michigan survey today did cause 10-year Treasury yields to fall a little, and that caused some, I guess, slight easing of economic conditions that slowed down the 10-year the Treasury that it just continues to go higher, and that is fueling the raw soul, 2000 and the Dow outperformance, you could also say that the banks didn't get hurt, because these reports show that both JP Morgan and Wells Fargo did better than we expected. The author of this piece says that consumers are resilient. Wells Fargo says that consumer spending is stable. Mike Sazio, the chief financial officer of the San Francisco Bank, told reporters on a call that consumer spending growth is still strong, even though it may be a little slower than it was earlier this year. It's still hardest on people with lower means, he said, because prices have been going up for a few years now. The bank also said that credit card amounts went up from a year ago to the quarter, which you could see last night. The CFO of J.P. Morgan, Jeremy Barnum, said that the reserve rise was caused by the bank's growth in credit card loans, not a drop in customer demand. I think that if you're in the middle, you're either on the left or the right and not in the middle. I know these issues are unfortunately very political these days, but the truth is that according to the BLS Jobs Report, a record low number of companies say they're hiring and firing every month. The economic data points we're getting are just terrible, so the data isn't very accurate even according to the federal government. 
Powell has said several times in the last two months or so that economic data only tells us a small part of the story. But company earnings are a different story because executives are legally required to tell you the truth or at least what they think is right. It doesn't have to be a fact, but they can't knowingly mislead investors. If that's the case and banks said good things about consumers, then the economy may be in better shape than we think. I have to say that these bank earnings at least make me a little less nervous. I still think that markets aren't pricing in risk fairly. If banks say people are doing fine and we don't see any more dramatic weakening, then maybe the odds of a soft landing go up a bit. But I still think it's way too early to tell if we're going to have a soft landing or not. The point is that company earnings will tell us a lot more about the economy and the consumer than the Fed or economic data. These earnings are very important, and if they come in well, that's what will drive markets higher. I would say that markets have been rising because analysts have been lowering their earnings estimates for Q3, so it wouldn't surprise me if there was some selling once more businesses started to report. Liz Young Thomas on X said that stocks and government prices have gone up a lot in the last two weeks, which is another sign that growth is picking up speed. Dynamics is the main force that moves prices. It is said that the market is fairly priced when the SP500's P in year-over-year -year CPI add up to 20. Liz and Saunders write X the rule of 20. In other words, it looks like the stocks are too expensive. Today is the second year of this strong market. The rate of change for the SP500 over the last two years is 60%, which is in the 95th percentile of all times. This means that by any real measure of market strength, you're in the top 5% of all market rallies in history. Another way to say this is that this is not a normal market rally. This kind of rally only happens about once every 20. 20 out of 20 times, markets have not done as well in the last two years. Changes from the prior month caused the year-over-year -year rate to rise. Energy was a greater drag on the overall number, but food contributed 0.06% to the headline number, the most since November 2022. In other significant news, China is expected to unveil a new stimulus package this weekend that might total up to $283 billion. Analysts predict that this will result in a decrease in municipal debt and a rise in spending, according to Liz Young Thomas on X this morning. According to Kevin Onyx, the Fed erred in lowering the yield by 50 basis points because they believed inflation would increase once more. This is the exact reverse of what business earnings calls indicate, which is that a recession begins when the market tightens due to decreasing pressure and falling demand. Again, I believe that a lot of Wall Street is overly worried about this. And now, in regards to soft landing or hard landing, the fact of the matter is recessions can start quickly, labor markets can roll over quickly, it really just takes a couple large companies making that decision to, you know, lay off people that starts a massive round of layoffs. Here's the deal we will. Not know if we have actually achieved a soft landing until probably midpoint next year if we can get to April's economic data, which will really be showing us March and things are fine if we're roughly just doing what you know sitting where we are now, if things have not gotten worse, the unemployment rate has not risen anymore, then we're probably going to have a soft landing. If we can go that long, historically speaking, you know we, we should be okay, but even then, there's still going to be uncertainties to whether we could see a recession in the second half of 2025, for instance. I don't think the fear of a recession should go away as quickly as it has. And the SP isn't pricing in any recession risk. The issue with markets isn't whether a recession occurs or not, but rather that I believe the risk of one is higher than what the markets believe it is. I can be certain that it is much higher than what the markets believe because the market is pricing in a 0% chance of a recession. So if you look at 15% expected EPS growth next year and a 22-fold multiple on that, that is definitely not recessionary.